deserves a, one of these. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Gia. That was really fun. If that didn't get us in the mood for worship, I don't know what will. So, well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worship in Jesus' Name on the sixth Sunday after Pentecost. I want to say thank you to William Griggs and Kaylee Jasmer, who are providing special music this morning, so they have a song for us. I invite you to stay for coffee. Uh, and treats, and just a reminder that all our coffee tips from uh, for July are going to Beaver Valley Lutheran to help them as they rebuild their uh, Fellowship Sunday School office wing, which was destroyed in one of those early tornadoes um, earlier this summer. So that's where the coffee tips are going for the month of July. Um, you may notice we have a tent set up with a campfire. Um, VBS starts this evening, and the theme is Happy Campers. So at 5.30, there's a, a family uh, potluck kind of picnic to kick off VBS and family activities this evening. And then um, through Thursday, uh, Bible school runs from 6 to 8 p.m. And if you want to bring your supper at 5.30 and eat together with others, you can bring your supper and eat here at the church. And then on Thursday at 7.45, the kids will be presenting their program followed by ice cream afterwards so that's uh, VBS this week and I think if you have one or two kids to sneak in there that didn't get registered they can still come so um, it'll be an exciting busy week here at the church Tuesday is the foot care clinic um, and I don't know if there are appointments I'm looking at Rita nope it's full so <laughs> um, if we get a cancellation you can always check the day of to see if there's a cancellation but it's foot care week and then Wednesday evening at 7.30, we have the second of our summer campfires in the upper parking lot. The VBS kids will be joining us for that, but you can come, bring your lawn chair, and we'll have uh, songs and a story um, around the campfire this coming Wednesday. Thursday at 9.30 in the morning or 7 in the evening, the Women of Grace Circles meet for uh, Bible study, and that's in the Fellowship Hall. And then next Saturday at 2 o'clock, we're having a memorial uh, celebration of life service for Bob and Ann Pulse. Ann passed away about six years ago, and Bob died in March. And so their daughters are able to all be in Sioux Falls, and so we're having the memorial service, so many of you may remember them. Um, so 2 o'clock here at the church, and then there's a gathering afterwards at the Country Club of Sioux Falls for uh, fellowship and time with the family. And a reminder, our service project right now is collecting school supplies for the children at Ideal, our companion community on the Rosebud, so you can bring school supply items. And then um, also we have information out about uh, Lutherans Outdoors uh, summer escape uh, trip for adults. It's kind of a camp on the bus, and this one is going to Minneapolis, and it involves um, a couple theater uh, presentations in a baseball game and there's information about it out on the information table if you're interested and then um, if you need your picture taken for the online directory Brian is available after the service Brian's the guy in the booth um, to take your picture so yeah the other guy in the booth <laughs> one of the guys in the Daryl would maybe take your picture as well I don't know sure um, so you can get your picture taken for the online directory or just a reminder um, that that is happening this summer. So I think those are all the particular announcements that I have this morning. Again, welcome to worship, and I'd invite you to stand as we turn to our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, do we have, I'm going to make sure we have a, you don't have the confession? Oh, okay. I will make confession on all our behalf, I guess. Or if you remember, this is not necessarily the most familiar, but merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. 
Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. And we join in singing our opening uh, song, which is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. Mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Have mercy. 
Together, let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ, and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence, that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? The first reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 18. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. As he sat at the entrance of his tent at the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 1 beginning at verse 15. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and our earth are created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him peace through all the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you a step holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continually continue 
securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has now been proclaimed in every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in God's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. For those of you joining us at home, we are on page 366 in the Spark Story Bible. We get to listen to our story near the campfire today. It's like we're camping. Are you guys excited? Yeah? All right, today I have a question for you. Do you and your brothers and sisters always get along? Not always? Really? You sometimes disagree? Have you guys ever been having to do chores, like clean your room or unload the dishwasher or maybe mow the lawn or rake the leaves, and you felt like you were doing more work than your brothers and sisters? Yes? All of you? Yes? You've all felt that way. I can't believe it. Well, in this story today, we have some sisters. Their names are Mary and Martha, and one of the sisters feels like she is doing all the work, and the other sister is sitting doing nothing. You guys can relate to that? Yeah. All right, so let's see what happens in this story. It says, Jesus and his disciples were traveling. Along the way, Jesus decided they would visit with their friends, Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were sisters, yep. Yeah. They lived in a house together, and they got along very well, most of the time at least. While Jesus visited with them, Mary sat on the floor and listened to Jesus teach. Martha, on the other hand, was very busy. She didn't have time to sit down. She cooked olives, fish, and bread. She cleaned, sweeping the dirt floor and shaking out the mats. Martha worked hard to make sure Jesus' visit was special. So who is this sitting on the floor listening to Jesus? Mary, yeah. Now look at her on this page. You can probably even see in the congregation. She doesn't look very happy, does she? It says, as she hurried around, she saw Mary sitting down with Jesus. <sighs> she thought, why doesn't she help me with the cleaning? A few minutes later, Mary was still sitting as Martha worked. Martha got a little bit angry. <clears throat> she cleared her throat, thinking, Mary could at least help me get this meal ready. All of these people to feed, and she isn't helping one little bit. Have you ever thought that? Yeah. Martha continued hurrying around, getting angrier by the minute. As she swept, she thought, Urgh, Mary knows how to use a broom. As she cooked, she said to herself, Ugh, I think my sister could at least stir this pot. As she got the water and towels ready for cleaning Jesus' hands, she grumbled to herself, Urgh, All this company and I am doing all of the work. Finally, when she was still working and Mary was still sitting, Martha couldn't take it anymore. She burst into the room and interrupted what Jesus was saying. Putting her hands on her hips, she said angrily, Mary, please get up and help me. She looked at Jesus. Ugh, Jesus, tell Mary to get up and do something. Do you think he's gonna? No? Jesus stopped what he was doing. Everything was quiet for a minute. Finally, Jesus looked at Martha. With love, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried about every little thing. Thank you for your work to make my visit comfortable, but you do not need to worry about all of those things. Mary has decided to sit and listen to me, and that is a good decision. Martha thought to herself, hmm, maybe I should just sit down and listen to what Jesus has to say, at least for a minute. Mary, maybe Mary has a good idea. So she sat and listened too, and that was a good decision. So I have a question for you. 
is, is this story trying to tell us that it's bad to clean and cook and make visitors comfortable? That's not what it's trying to say. What's it trying to tell us? That you should listen to God, yeah, or you should listen to Jesus, right? Um, so what if Jesus isn't at your house? How do you do that? Pray. Good. What else? Go to church. Good answer. Yeah, you guys are learning about Jesus right now, right? What about something? Is there something you could read? Hmm. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, you should still clean your house sometimes, right? And you should still cook meals for your friends and your family, and you should, still should take care of other people. But at the same time, we got to make sure we're making time for Jesus too, right? So it says, our star today says, act a bit like both Mary and Martha. Help a grown-up with a chore, and then read a story Bible together. So could you do both those things? Could you be like Mary and Martha? Could you be helpful and still spend time with Jesus? Absolutely you can. And you guys, I think most of you are coming to, all of you probably are coming to Bible school this week, right? So are you going to get to spend a lot of time with Jesus this week? Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks for coming up today, guys. Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you. Now, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Our friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I was going to say, Lisa and I are on the same wavelength. I think she kind of just summarized. So you'll really hear this this morning, maybe, huh? Um, with the children's reading. But uh, so we hear that Jesus and his disciples, it says, they went on their way and arrived at the home of Martha. And as we hear this story of Mary and Martha, it's important to know where Jesus and his disciples have come from and what they have been doing. So for the last few Sundays, we've been reading through Luke chapter 10. Um, and this story is the culmination of, of chapter 10. And chapter 10 is all about serving, about doing things. So it started a couple weeks ago, we heard the story of how Jesus sent out 70 disciples, right, to go and proclaim the good news. And uh, they're to be out serving the gospel while relying on the hospitality and service of others, about being welcomed, right? So they were sent out to serve, to proclaim, to do, to be the kingdom. And then last week we heard the parable of the Good Samaritan, which talks about, you know, serving the neighbor. How do I serve my neighbor and care for my neighbor who's lying half dead in the ditch and being a neighbor to those in need? So we've been hearing a lot about serving. But then we get this story about Mary and Martha, and it seems at first glance that um, serving is not the thing that Jesus calls us to do primarily, right? Because Martha is busy. She's trying to be the servant. Um, in the Middle East, and Jesus' day, and even still today, the tradition continues, you know, hospitality and welcoming of others into your home was an important value. You know, we saw that in the first reading with these visitors who come to the tent of Abraham and Sarah. 
and it was almost like a requirement that if people came, you welcomed them in because there was no really hotels like we have or verbos or bed and breakfast where you could find a place to stay, um, but you relied on the welcome and hospitality and service of others. If not, you were stuck out in the desert and would um, be in real trouble. Um, so, because if you didn't welcome people into your home, they might well perish. And so Martha was doing what was customary, what was expected, welcoming and providing for Jesus and his disciples, providing that hospitality and serving them. She was busy cooking and preparing for these guests that they might know welcome and hospitality. Now Martha is all about the doing, about the serving, right? thinking that, okay, that's a good thing. That's what we've been, Jesus has been teaching throughout this whole section of the gospel. But she's doing it alone. Right? Her sister was doing nothing, we heard, uh, but sitting at the feet of Jesus and learning from him. She was actually taking the position of being a disciple, one of, the, one of the disciples, where you sit at the feet of your teacher and learn. And Martha complains, right? She's finally fed up, and she complains and says, Jesus, the first words are, don't you care? <laughs> right? That's, that's the first signal that something is... And Martha needs some kind of healing and bringing something together because she's starting to feel sorry for herself and she's turned inward. Don't you care, Jesus, that I'm doing all this work by myself? Make her, make Mary do something. Make her help me serve. Um, don't you care about me? Now, Jesus doesn't respond, of course, in the way that Martha expects. You know, she probably expects him to say, oh, Mary, go help your sister. <laughs> She's overwhelmed. He doesn't tell Mary to get up and serve. Rather, he chastises Martha, right? You are worried and distracted about many things. There's only one thing, and Mary has chosen that, the better part. So as we've been hearing all these stories about serving in Luke 10. You know, we see Martha trying to be the servant. And we might say, well, what's up with Jesus' response? Are we not called to serve? Are we not called to serve? Well, we know the answer to that. We are. We are called to serve. We are called to be the neighbor to those in need. The doing of that is vitally important. It's important for the life of others. And, um, but Jesus is saying there's something that comes first. So as we are about serving, remember there's this foundational part that makes our service really the work of God, God's work through us to others. And we can understand what that is from uh, Luther's understanding of the, of the commandment, right? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. When Luther talks about keeping this commandment, he doesn't say, go to church. It's not about necessarily just going to church or doing something. Rather, he frames it as, um, and I gotta read this because when I had to memorize it in confirmation, the language was a little different. Um, we are to fear and love God so that we do not despise, or when I learned it, it was neglect, uh, preaching, or the hearing of God's word, but instead keep that word holy and gladly hear and learn it. We are to gladly hear and learn God's word. That's really what Mary was doing. She was taking the time to sit at the feet of Jesus and kind of take in God's word for her life. And Martha's problem was not that she was serving, that she was doing, but that she was distracted by many things, right? She had sort of lost the foundation of why she was doing what she was doing, and it got so overwhelmed that it, she turned in on herself. So she get focused on me rather than on those she was even welcoming into her home. You know, God gave us the Sabbath as a gift, that opportunity to hear God's word or be rooted and grounded in God's word. Um, in a world, back when the commandments were given, the world was that you had to work 
from sunup to sundown just to survive. Right? You had to be about doing many things so that you had a shelter and food and water and everything you needed. You had to work. And so to take a pause or a rest or a break was really a gift. Um, and God says, though, it's important to take that pause, <laughs> to take that pause so that the doing in your life really has its purpose and its foundation and you're centered in why you are doing what you are doing, right? In that time to pause, one can hear the voice of God. And if we don't have that Sabbath time, that pause time, that sitting at the feet of Jesus time, we get overwhelmed by our doing and it loses its intention and its focus. Martha was not being hospitable in her attempt to be so because she was distracted by many things. She was overwhelmed, right? It's like you just keep doing the next thing on your list without thinking about why you're doing the next thing on your list because it's just, you got to just, sometimes you just have to stop <laughs> to get that focus. And so the one thing, the thing that Jesus is talking about is he says, Mary has chosen this better part. She has chosen this one thing um, in a life of faith. It's to keep rooted and grounded in the word of God that first of all tells us that we have life in Christ through grace. You know, our lives are held by God who loves us so much that he gives himself for us. And then the rest, our service, our lives of service flows from this, right? And that what we do then becomes sort of a channel of that grace of God, that we live that grace that we have received first. And that's what makes our doing significant and different. Our service really becomes the living out of grace. When we are filled with the love of God, which comes from hearing and knowing the word, uh, that love overflows from us. You know, Martin Luther um, once said, when he, is, when he was asked by somebody what his plans for the next day were, he said, work, work, from early until late. In fact, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. Right? I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. He knew about that. Remember the Sabbath. Hear God's word. Right? And, and that's our calling. You know, we all leave, we have busy lives. Even if we are at home, it seems like we have busy lives. I know I look around my house and it's like, oh, I should be doing that and that and that. The first thing, <laughs> the primary thing, is first of all, to stop. Because we can often become distracted like Martha and find ourselves at odds with ourselves and those around us. But we have the one thing necessary to give purpose and meaning to our serving. We are invited to sit at the feet of Jesus and soak in the word so that when we rise to serve, we do so rooted and grounded in the grace and love of God. Right? So however we find that time, you know, coming to church is one time to find that time to gather together, to pause, to soak in the word of God that reminds us that we are loved and have life in Christ. Um, or whether it's taking a few minutes during a busy day, even if it's five minutes just to stop and connect with God, to read scripture, to pray, whatever it is, however we can make it work, we take that time. We take that time and that does root us and ground us so that we know we are loved and that love will in turn flow from us to others, and our service will have significance and meaning. Amen. Let's stand as we sing.
we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to greet those around you with Christ's peace and turn and send peace to those watching elsewhere, even as they are sending peace to you by typing in their comments. And then you may be seated. I do want to say thank you for your, your tithes and your offerings and your gifts. You are doing great service and ministry through the church, um, responding to God's grace in your life. So thank you for the ways that you give your offerings. And if you brought an offering with you today, you can leave it in the plate, which is on the table just outside the center doors of the sanctuary. And as we sing our offering song, if there are kids that have noisy offering, they can bring that up to the milk can while we sing. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, for the creation, and for all in need. Ever-present God, in Christ you fill all things. As your people, the church, gather to hear your word, share your meal, and receive your blessing, teach us to welcome strangers as we have been welcomed by you. God of grace, through Christ you created all things, visible and invisible. Teach us to honor and protect all creation, including living things that remain hidden from our eyes, such as air, atmosphere, molecules, and microscopic creatures. God of grace. Through Christ, you reconcile all things. Motivate those in power to end enslavement and de dehumanization or brutality of any kind, and to protect and improve the lives of all, including indigenous peoples. We pray for your peace, O oh God, in our world, um, especially in the Ukraine, and that you would guide the leaders of the world into the ways of peace, watching over all who are deployed. God of grace, through Christ you bring peace. 
assure all who are worried and distracted by many things of your constant presence. Soothe those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Sustain all who are afflicted and those who serve as caregivers. And we pray for your healing presence for those we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list, including Merlin and Marge, Roger, the, and the family of Bob and Ann Pulse. God of grace. In Christ, you make your word fully known. Inspire this worshiping community to abide fully in your word as we sit at the feet of Jesus. And bless the ministry of teachers and Bible study leaders. Bless our vacation Bible school this week that your word may enter our lives and root and ground our service. God of grace. In Christ, O oh Lord, you brought forth the firstborn from the dead, and we give thanks for the saints you have gathered at your table. Gather us with them in your eternal glory. God of grace. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. We join together in the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And would you rise for the benediction? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the Spirit sends us forth.